Hi everyone, this is Aisha from Retail Day Club. Following up on uh, the part one of my timeless books or classics video, I have compiled another 20 books for you. Now I won't linger on each recommendation for very long, but just you know enough to say a few quick words for some of my favorite personal reads. And unlike my previous video, which is the part one, I will also mention a few similar films and you know book pairings based on what I think complement works of literature such as these. Now, if you haven't already seen part one of my 20 books that are timeless conversations, I've added the link above and below uh, in the description. You can also watch Amreen's 20 quick book recommendations that helped her evolve as a reader. So links to both videos are in the description below. Um, let's move on. First book uh, that I want to talk about is Nausea. Now, um, this is the unprocessed and coarse thoughts of a young French writer. So it may seem perhaps a bit too abstract or hyperbolic to certain readers, especially if you're completely unaware of the plot of the book or even of the philosophy of uh, Jean-Paul Sartre. But I honestly loved it. I read his The Myth of Sisyphus and uh, even Nausea very close together. But both books, you know, really uh, cemented a very crucial aspect of uh, Jean-Paul Sartre's philosophy. And, uh, and I think we all have certain unexpected memories like that, that become co-memories as long as books are concerned. And such was my memory of reading Nausea. I've never really forgotten it. Now, I only know this from my personal experience, but with a book like Nausea, you have to let it unravel at its own pace rather than your own. It's not something that you can force yourself to come to terms with. Certain sentences or ideas from the book may surprise you months later. So it's definitely a very thought-provoking read about the human psyche, identity, existence and reality. Now, a film that I can quickly think of that is similar to Nausea is uh, Naked. And um, I mean, yeah, the film possesses a different tune than the nothingness that encompasses Nausea. But the book, you know, both the book and the film are quite unsettling and dark and nihilistic. So I think that they work great together. Faust is another philosophical read. Um, it's poetic and whimsical, which is a bizarre combination, honestly. But I think it does, it only intensifies and heightens your experience of reading this poem. Now, I have read the second part of Faust as well, but I honestly didn't like it as much as I liked the first one. Now, I just thought of uh, Ingmar Bergman's The Seventh Seal. I watched this film a while ago, but you know, just the relationship between the protagonist in the film and death is quite bizarre and intriguing to say the least. For this one, um, which is definitely one of the best plays on on we and absurdism, nothingness and existentialism. Now these may these words may sound a bit pretentious, but really when you read Beckett, it's really not. Um, he has a knack of bringing lofty concepts and ideas down to a very coarse and human dimension. And the same can be said of Malloy, Malondais and The Unnameable, which is another book of Beckett's that I recently read. So um, I won't recommend a film, um, but I do recommend that you watch a lecture on Waiting for Godot. Um, I'll link that video in the description. The Just the insights in that video, you know, of the, the history and the essence of the play is just, I think it it's bound to make you fall in love with the play even more. The next book is Paradise Lost by John Milton. Now, I don't think I can sum up my experience of reading Paradise Lost for the third time since, you know, my video of video review of the book is on this channel and I also posted a review of the book uh, on Instagram. Now, towards the end of my post on Instagram, I wrote that Milton leaves you with a ruinously splendid story, your tone. You want Milton's demystified sublimity to redeem the splendor of paradise, leaving you completely devastated that you should reach the end so quickly. 
unable to part with Satan's tragic heroism. As for me, this is the kind of devastation I would gladly feel over and over again. The next one is A uh, Woman in the Dunes by Kobo Abe. Now, The Woman in the Dunes is just this is one of the very few times that I will say that the film is much much better than the book. Honestly, I loved Hiroshi Teshigahara's films. His The Woman in the Dunes, The Face of Another and The Man Without a Map are some of the films that I've seen that were adapted from uh, Kobo Abe's stories and there's already so much going on in the minds of these characters and uh, you know when you read them in the book and Teshigahara somehow captures it so well it's intense and jarring and unconventional for sure and Don Quixote is the perfect book to read as it is an antidote to the loneliness that is caused by solitary reading now when you read a character who is so consumed by his excessive literary indulgences that the entire novel is based on his adventurous and extravagant emancipation from it it just made the weeks i spent reading this book less melancholic and more imaginative and adventurous now the next one is Charlotte Bronte's uh, Jane Eyre. Now contrary to what I had thought I really enjoyed reading Jane Eyre. It's very contemplative. It feels like a modern work of literature. You know, it's self-aware, it's psychological and also very very enlightening and it speaks to, you know, the emotional and spiritual and existential woes in a very unique and timeless manner. So that is uh, Jane Eyre and the next one is The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy. Uh, this is also uh, among the first books that I read. If you'd like to uh, know my thoughts on The God of Small Things, I have shared a video review of this book on my channel. Okay, so the next book is another uh, favorite favorite is actually an understatement i honestly believe i can't i haven't reread this book this year nor have i you know shared my thoughts or you know made a separate video on it for read a day club but there's nothing i can possibly say about this book that hasn't been said already the writing of stoner speaks for itself it's so introspective and it allows you to think so much about the purpose of life where the personal just unprecedentedly becomes the philosophical now if you write if you liked reading stoner i think you would enjoy watching films like roma and uh, burning ikiru and perhaps even uh, oslo 31 august as well the next one is crime and punishment now i've read this book twice the first time i read this book i didn't like it and um, it was during my second reading that I you know understood that the story had nothing to do really with either the crime or the punishment it's more to do with the psyche of Raskolnikov but it's also so much more about the other characters that I mentioned in the story as well and you know the way life is lived or survived. Bresson's pickpocket then Parasite and Enemy are my recommendations for films that I think you'll enjoy if you liked Crime and Punishment. There's plenty that has already been said about Murakami and Norwegian Wood but I do I'd like to share a story uh, about how I got to reading this book along with God of Small Things but Norwegian Wood was another one that made me fall in love with literature. So back when I was in college, I used to commute by train every day and one day on my way back home, I saw a girl reading Norwegian Wood and the copy that she was reading was is the same one as the one I have and I don't know, I just got really curious and fascinated and at the time I wasn't reading much. I mean, maybe just Khalid Hosseini, but reading literature the way I do now wasn't even on my mind. So I saw the book, I went back home, I googled it and ordered this one. This is, this is one of my oldest copies, it's been with me for around 10 years now. So uh, this one and even Kafka on the Shore is, the, these two are my favorite Marakami books.
speaking of oldest books in my sh on my shelf uh, the meta sisyphus is also another one that has been with me for almost a decade and i mentioned this in my last video um, that meta sisyphus uh, actually all of uh, albert camus works have got me to read more philosophy and just approach life in a very detached and unemotional manner and the next one is the picture of dorian gray here it is um it this is a great example of decadent literature you know aesthetic art it's something and the something that's become very popular and trending these days on social media and even a great example of the dichotomy between love and pleasure and desire and greed i actually read this book a few uh weeks ago and um along with against nature by carl huesman i think i'm sorry if i'm mispronouncing his name but yeah both of them are great examples of decadent literature and i think they complement each other very well now very similar to stoner is this uh, herman hesse's siddhartha now this is also about the loss of life's purpose though i think siddhartha is more spiritual than philosophical uh, it's a short read it may seem a bit vague sometimes perhaps even a bit trite in the way hesse writes about spirituality and wisdom and life but you have to stick with it the book has some really beautiful and insightful lines um i like to read one of them right now one must find the source within one's own self one must possess it everything else was seeking merely a detour or an error there's another one that i really liked i always keep going back to that one um yeah it is what could i say to you that would be of value except that perhaps you seek too much that as a result of your seeking you cannot find now the next one uh, is carl jung's man and his symbols now, i know of no other book better than this one if you want to understand various forms of reality how we perceive the nature of shapes and not just in reality actually also in dreams and in the way we imagine our lives now i would also recommend four archetypes which is another deeply introspective and insightful and reality reclaiming read if you're interested in peeling back the veil of reality and existence okay so films with intense symbolism the lighthouse eyes wide shut Mulholland Drive, Schenectady, New York and Spirited Away. Now I think I've rambled on for far longer than I hoped. So very quickly the last three recommendations uh, are perhaps it would be a bit too far fetched to say that these books are life changing because I mean what is life? But anyway, if you liked any of my previous recommendations, these next ones are worth reading over and over again so that would be in search of lost time or uh, swan's way uh, i don't have my copy of frankenstein uh, by mary shelley so that is my next recommendation then we have the, the letters of vincent van gogh and two of uh, jorge luis borges's uh, collection of short stories so the first one is fiction the other one is labyrinths now both books have the same stories but labyrinths is a much wider uh collection like it has way more than just fiction uh, labyrinths does have a collection of his essays as well on uh franz kafka and bernard shaw and uh, even don quixote So this is it as far as my 20 recommendations go. Uh if you have any recommendations similar to the ones that I have spoken about please let me know. And uh yeah, this is Aisha from Reader Day Club and I'll see you guys next time.